Ladies and gentlemen, friends of all ages. Oh wait, this isn't a circus. It's K-5 Children's Church. This is Reverend Patricia coming to you this Sunday to share with you some words about a message. Now I wanted to ask you boys and girls about messages you might have heard or seen. Have you ever heard of a message in a bottle? Yes, sometimes people put messages in a bottle and then they drop the bottle in the ocean and let it go to see who will find it. Please don't do that. It can actually become an environmental hazard to animals in the ocean, so don't do it, but it has been done. Sometimes when people buy a house and they begin to remodel their house, they'll find that the previous owner or maybe even the builder left a message inside the wall of the house. Sometimes it's a message about who lived in the house or sometimes it's a message about who built the house. Another thing that sometimes people will do is they will create time capsules. I'm told we have a time capsule here at Washington Street, but no one seems to know where it is. But in a time capsule, you can put messages in there for people who will come after you, generations beyond yourself. Messages, they're very important and we always seem to want to be giving each other messages. Now for most of you, you think about messages and you think about this. It's a cell phone. And I'm sure if your parents are like most people today, they have one of these at least at all times with and only a hand reach away. We get lots of messages on these. Sometimes they're voice messages if a call comes in that you can't take. Other times we get text messages. Yes, I have these folks who shop for me and sometimes they text message me five times before I ever get my groceries. So frustrating. But text messages are very convenient, aren't they? They help us communicate with each other. Sometimes they let us know if, where someone else that we're looking for might be waiting. So they're very helpful. Also, emails come in this way, and email messages are very important. We communicate a lot of our church information by email these days. Well, and your parents might be like me. I have a cell phone, but I also have an iPad because I can read messages much better on my iPad. It's larger, it's easier to type on, and I can get emails, text messages, and I can get um, all kinds of information off my iPad. I can get messages from businesses all around the world. Just if I Google their name, I'll get all kinds of information. So we are really good about messaging, aren't we? Well, today, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about messages because messages are a part of our Christian world. It's been that way from the very beginning. When Jesus came, he brought us messages from God. That's what he taught his disciples, the things he had learned as he understood the scripture and as he sat with God and the Spirit, the things he knew because he is God. And he gave us messages to share as well. The stories we have in our scriptures are messages. In fact, this translation of the Bible is called the message because there are, it is considered the message of holy word. Now, this week we're talking about messages in a different way because it's three weeks after Easter. And so we have a very important message to share with the world about Easter and about who Jesus is. And the truth is every time you come to Sunday school or to worship or to children's church, you're gonna get messages about Jesus and God the Father or the Holy Spirit because that's what we're teaching you that's what we're hoping that you'll learn more and more about. Well, today, our lesson comes from the 24th chapter of Luke. Now, this is an interesting part of the lesson. Jesus, as you know, has already left the tomb. 
He is, the ladies went to the tomb that morning. They were going to do the things that were a part of their custom. And they found that the stone had been rolled away and there was no human body in the tomb. They did not know where Jesus had gone. They did not see him. But an angel was there. And an angel told them that he was alive. The angel said that he had been raised from the dead and that he had gone before them to Galilee. Well, even though the angel told them to go and tell the disciples and Peter, they didn't. But that's okay, because guess what? Jesus just kept showing up. He was, there were two of his disciples walking on the road to Emmaus. And Emmaus was a little town kind of about 11 miles northeast of Jerusalem. And they were walking there, and all of a sudden this stranger approached them and started talking to them. And he kept saying that he didn't know what was going on in Jerusalem, so they told him that Jesus had been handed over and he had been crucified. And then this stranger began to tell them all about the scripture. And when they invited him to stay and eat supper with them, the stranger took bread and he broke it. And all of a sudden they realized he wasn't a stranger at all. He was Jesus. He showed up right there at the table. Well, they were so excited, they ran all the way back to Jerusalem and they found the disciples and they went into this upper room and they were trying to tell them all about what had happened to them. And they were saying, yes, but he's appeared to Peter as well. Oh my goodness, he just keeps showing up. What? What? The women said he wasn't in the tomb. He showed up on the road to Emmaus. He made himself known to Peter. And then all of a sudden, Jesus was standing right there with him. And they were confused. They were concerned. They were frightened. Because they weren't real sure that he wasn't a ghost. Because they really knew he was dead. And it's really hard for people to think that somebody who died is alive. And that's the message. He is alive. He's not a ghost. He's not an apparition. In fact, when Jesus came to them that night, he showed them his hands and his feet. He said, you can touch me. Just go ahead, touch me. I'm, I'm flesh and bone, just like you. He ate with them. And then he sat down and he talked to them just as he had talked to them before about the things of God. Pretty amazing, isn't it? Pretty amazing. The message is he is alive. He really is alive. And while he was sitting there talking to his disciples, he told them, you are my witnesses. And that's the message for us today. We are witnesses. You and me, your mom and dad, your sisters and brothers, and all the people who believe and follow Jesus. We are witnesses. And we have a message to share. The same message of those first disciples. He is alive. He is really alive. And he keeps showing up in our world today. That's our Easter message. And I want you to share it with everyone. Because Jesus is showing up for you, for me. And Jesus will always show up for us. Nothing can stop him. Not anyone. Not any force. Nothing. Because he loves us. He loves us, and he shows up for us whenever we need him. Let us pray together. Thank you, Jesus, for loving us. Thank you for always showing up when we need you. 
Thank you for teaching us the things we need to know to be disciples. Thank you for loving us. Help us, Lord, to always be following you and to share your message of life and love with others. We pray in your name. Amen. Thank you, boys and girls. Have a great Sunday.